Right. Welcome, welcome everyone to the VO Dojo 21 Questions. I'm Tish Hicks, the Master Sensei of the VO Dojo here in Burbank, California. And, um, oh gosh, Marco, you know what? I just realized I should make sure I know how to, how to pronounce oh, your last name. Cam Camarota. 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 Okay. Not meatball. Uh, <laughs> no, I, although that's what it oh, says in the zoom i forgot that. Camarota. okay <laughs> right. Our dear okay i'm gonna do a, a cut mm -hmm. <laughs> welcome welcome everyone to the vo dojo 21 questions i'm tish hicks the master sensei of the vo dojo here in burbank california and we are very excited to welcome our uh guest marco camarota uh marco so glad to see you glad to have Hi. you yeah of course thank you so much for asking me here i appreciate that very much yeah so you ready for some questions yeah let's do it <clears throat> okay um what's your one word check-in for today if you had to distill the essence of your being in this moment what would the word be productive productive fantastic where are you from uh upstate new york awesome and where do you live now upstate new york but we're moving to austin texas in april oh wow that's exciting mm -hmm. that's very cool uh where would we know your voice from um you would know my voice well from my youtube channel uh marco meatball but also from uh i've been in genshin impact uh i played a character named dvorak uh i've been some like uh walla roles in arte and uh and oh god this other anime that i can't remember gun something uh <laughs> and then also commercials <laughs> commercials for dell um commercial for ikea um uh, yeah st stuff like that it, it's been it's been hit or miss since the youtube channel took over i i still i still audition and still do voiceover but the full-time thing is this is this youtube channel and then i do my auditions as they come so you know how that yeah, goes. So it's all it's all a blend that is built built on everything yeah. Yeah. um let's see how, how long have you been doing vo i've been doing vo for oh, three years almost four years mm-hmm Mm -hmm. I remember, I remember as, as, uh, we met, you're always the guy with like the awesome question. The questions. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. it's, it's cool. <laughs> it's cool here that we're getting to ask you the questions. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, who's your, who's your current team and whatever that means to you, um, either representation or who's supporting you with, with what you're doing on your voiceover or, with the YouTube channel or in sure. your personal life, who's your current team? Uh, my current team is my fiance Mary, um, my agents at Access Talent, Roger Becker and Alyssa Blumenthal. They're incredible. Um, I feel very blessed to be on a very close, like an email basis. That's like, I just feel like I, I can text Alyssa and she like doesn't, you know, we have a good good rapport. Um, and then, so that's on voiceover side. And then I'm also with People Store and Atlanta, but I'm less connected with them because it's pretty fairly recent. Mm -hmm. But uh, but then on the YouTube channel, the people that I interface with every day are my thumbnail artist Raul and my video editor Nathan. We literally talk on a day to day basis, and they're, I mean, these six people are basically the people I sort of interact with the most when it comes to my like professional life. And obviously, Mary is my personal life too. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Yeah, I just like to to let people know that when you where, wherever you get, you don't get it. Oh, you don't get there alone, <laughs> right? No. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Um. What is what is your current setup like, uh, tech tech wise? So I have a, a closet booth that is very very good. Um. It's it's actually shockingly good. It's a PVC uh like sort of so. Originally, when we moved when I moved into this apartment, I was going to make uh the closet. Uh, kind of just be open but then I discovered that the sound wasn't great and, and there was too much reverberation so I mm -hmm. decided to uh, essentially build a PV it was about $250-$300 decided to make a PVC sort of fort within the closet and mm -hmm. I recorded uh, I'm in a game that I can't talk about just yet that I recorded all the sessions in there um, I've recorded other stuff in there as well that's like all legitimate work that it's been very good so that's my setup I have a Sennheiser 416 in there uh a mac mac mini and just a monitor mm -hmm. and keyboard it's very it's very basic and then out here for youtube i have like a deity uh deity s mic i think it's called and mm -hmm. just my my headphones and my computer yeah cool 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 so you're the, the two sides of your life mm -hmm. <laughs> um so getting into the origin story questions um how did you get started 
Uh, I retired from professionally singing in 2019. Uh, I was really sort of trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. And, and sing, singing opera is what you did. Singing right? opera. Yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah, I retired from singing opera professionally um, in 2019. And I decided, well, I mean, I have all this training. I might as well use my voice. And so mm -hmm. I just started I just started using my voice more. Uh, and I also <clears throat> was still traveling mm -hmm. at the time. And I was like, oh, well, what a perfect gig. I could travel. I have a home studio. And then I could also have something I could travel with. You know, voiceover, theoretically, you can do anywhere. So, yeah, I just kind of doubled down. Maybe a little bit too quickly. I like should probably should have coached for like a, like maybe like six more months. But I kind of was like, oh, pff, I have opera training. I'm fine. And mm -hmm. so... So it still plagues me to this day that I recorded my first demo <clears throat> a little bit too soon. Um, but yeah, so I made a demo and then I just kind of got started and I just dove in head first. I, I marketed some like intensely uh, direct marketing for the first two and a half, three ish years. And then when the YouTube channel took over in February of 22, so wait, <clears throat> are we in 23? We're in 23. Yeah. Almost yeah. the end of 23. <laughs> let, me just take, let me just take a sip of water. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> I was having like chips and it's like <clears throat> <clears throat> so I started the YouTube channel in 22 and uh that sort of took my main focus. So instead of direct marketing now, I mean thankfully I've been able to leverage the channel in some ways, but in general, um most of what I've done is just through the agents and uh and I've sort of stopped direct marketing because it's it's too much work and my priority is Every, right. every day, my priorities on the channel. Yeah. And then when, oh, go ahead. Oh, and then whenever voiceover opportunities come in, um, e-learning especially, I'll just take the time out to record those and then hop back out here. Mm -hmm. And can you tell us a little bit about Marco Meatball and how, how it has become? And it's I think it's such a fantastic story of, of how you have combined your passion that turned into like a difficult relationship <laughs> that you yeah. grew up with and then finding voiceover and then um combining the two but can you tell us a little bit about about what what's been going on the last couple of years sure i mean I, i've been a, a gamer my whole life since i was seven uh when we immigrated from italy the first thing i ever got was a super nintendo and from that moment on i was sort of hooked and uh not necessarily with the music but the act of playing video games and uh video games have been a, a cornerstone of every major event of my life. Like the first time I bought something, I bought a video game with my own money. The first the Christmases, PlayStations, like it's always been weirdly, it's always been like a cornerstone of my life. And so as I got older and I was in the music scene, like no one really talked about video games per se, and no one really talked about video game music, but I list, have listened to video game music since I was in middle school. And I just, I don't know, like no one talked about it and no one had talked about it when I started the channel. I was like, man, I feel like kind of like a pariah. No one, no one, no one talks about this. And mm -hmm. I just sort of, one day I started, uh, I was grieving the loss of my father. My father passed away and sort of needed something to just occupy a little bit of space just to give some space to myself. I started the channel. <clears throat> I filmed three videos, like one after the other. I edited them down super basic you can watch those still um <laughs> and then and then we went to pick up my dog in dc and i was getting youtube notifications and i just assumed that i'd commented on someone else's youtube video and so as people were like responding or liking the comment or whatever it turned out that they were liking my video my first one i had made and that quickly sort of snowballed uh and and yeah, I never really stopped. And so that's two years ago, almost uh, in January. It's a full two years, uh, fe February 11th. So so the premise of Marco Meatball is music in video games. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. The premise is uh, I'm an opera singer turned voice actor who loves to talk about a, a video game music from an emotional perspective, because that's what I did as an opera singer. Uh, essentially, you know, the, the, the composition's written. And then it's my t job uh, through training and experience to um, sort of guide the uh, listener, uh, which would be the audience, to connect to the story via my body and my voice and so on and so forth. But all the work that we do on the back end 
is all about interpretation and how to connect to it. And, you know, all the stuff we talk about as actors and voice actors in mm -hmm. terms of like characterization, backstory, things like that, improvisation, um, finding your why, finding your want, finding your whatever, doing the doings, so on and so forth. And so now I just do that and I teach, I hate, I don't actually like being a teacher, but I, I teach, uh, <laughs> I, I teach active listening essentially. Like, listen to the way that this, this is this way. And why is it like this? And what does this mean? And what does this signify? And listen to how the rhythm does this. And it's been very fruitful. And yeah, I mean, I, I think today I was at 244,000 subscribers and it continues to grow. It ebbs and flows, you know, some videos pop off mm -hmm. and we'll cross a hundred thousand other videos, barely cross 10,000, but ultimately mm -hmm. someone connects to those videos. And that's really the goal ultimately is to, um, allow people to uh, connect to the music that they love from video games more deeply. Yeah. Yeah. That's so powerful that all these things have come, come together. Um, in my experience of you, Marco, uh, is that you are very much from the heart yeah. and it yeah. sounds like everything has organically come from, um, from the heart, whether coming through heartbreak with, mm -mm. yeah. Uh, yeah. stepping away from something as as powerful a relationship as uh, that requires as as becoming a professional opera singer and the heartbreak of of your your loss with with your dad which i totally understand uh in right. in ways that i couldn't uh, a couple of years ago um so right. yeah it's, it seems like heart heart first is the very much way that you you approach everything. <laughs> ah, it's funny. I, I, it's funny you say that. I went to the doctor yesterday, uh, and they were uh, they were like, "What do you do for a living?" And I was like, "I'm a YouTuber," and and I used to shy away from it, but I'm very proud of what I've been able to achieve. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the nurse was like, "Not exactly a good retirement plan, there, is there?" And I was like, "No, but I've never cared about that. I mean, I care about it <laughs> to a point." But you know, as a, as a, as an artist, I think we always have to put ourselves heart first and. You know, I have my own uh, trials and tribulations and, and frustrations with voiceover, and I wish that things would move faster, and I wish that I would get more opportunities, and my ego would be more satisfied with the, you know, having more agents and having an LA agent and all this other stuff. But ultimately, I am happy that, you know, for the last three years, I'm glad I'd have to hustle less in, in that realm because voiceover requires a certain amount of diligence, and I'm I'm grateful that my direct marketing days were very tiring because uh, I would email 50, 60, 70 people. CRMs mm -hmm. and all this other stuff and to now sort of rely on my agents to provide those opportunities and which most of the time as you know we don't book um it's uh it's I'm grateful that that's the, the sort of path I have now where it's auditions and voice and YouTube channel and I've mm -hmm. somehow been able to have an income and I'm very very lucky but yeah thank you yeah heart first yeah I like that and and one of the things that was, that's, I think is interesting about having you here is that you have taken you put your heart first and then developed the business that that you you know it may not be the path of the linear path but you've created something that's even even more profound and more um, impactfully you um, and then the opportunities come because the the because you're being drawn they're being drawn to you because you you are being so authentically you um well what what do you think are the three top ingredients in your success persistence uh vulnerability and uh, uh a, a willingness to stay open mm-hmm Mm -hmm. Do you want me to expound on those, or, or no? yeah, yeah, uh, well, yeah, uh, I, I think uh, maybe even especially the willingness to stay open, yeah, sure, but all, all of them, yeah, yeah. Uh, determination. Um, I work very hard. Um, I have always been determined to be the best of what I do. Uh, in fact, you know, there's there's a few music reactors on YouTube. I would say that at this point, I'm I'm in the upper region of that in terms of view numbers and in terms of also like you know what what i think i provide people because no one else is talking about the emotional aspect of music mostly we're talking about compositional style or things like that i mean everybody says the same we're all equally talented and all professionals in our own way um but i've been determined to really like make this the career that i want it to be um and that's why i still put out a video every single day for the most part um five days a week mm -hmm. plus, I, plus i stream like multiple hours a day um, I'm very, very focused and very passionate about this. I'm very passionate about 
uh, articulating the importance of video game music in society and in popular culture and also in classical music uh, and integrating that with classical music. So I'm very determined to uh, see my goals through there. Um, willingness to stay open. When I filmed the first three videos and nothing really popped off, I was kind of like, well, this is a lot of work. I think I'll just step back. And then um, over time, I just started really actively engaging with the people that were stopping by, whether for permanently or whether for temporarily. People started coming. They were requesting songs. They were requesting this and that and the other. And I just stayed open and, and started to just um, really double down on on their suggestions. And I, I still basically respond to every comment. And uh, mm -hmm. I find that uh, YouTube actually is more of a human resources job in dealing with people that need therapy more than it is uh, actually creating the videos, especially in my personal case. Um, mm -hmm. So willingness to stay open and, and uh, I try to, I try to actively change people if they come on my channel and they're a little aggressive or over passionate. I try to um, not respond emotionally and stay open to their lived in experience and, um, and also just stay open. I, I really believe in asking the universe for what we want. And it's funny because um uh, two years or a year before the channel started, I, I was really big on TikTok and wanting to be big on TikTok because I had mm -hmm. seen the success of others, other voice actors, especially. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I wrote down, um, you know, have a million, a million or something like that. Some million people that I influence every day for, for good on uh, TikTok. Mm -hmm. And uh, per usual, um, when writing things down in the present moment, I have, I, I do, I, 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 you know, whatever. Um, that came true and and it came true in its own way and not on okay. tiktok but right. but it's so so willingness to stay open to what the universe wants to provide you know i'm a little bit i'm not super into like faith and religion and and all the stuff but at the same time i do believe in um asking for what you want um mm -hmm. that's and then the, oh go, go ahead yeah that, that's the first that's the first rule of the dojo oh you know, what <laughs> you want ask for it people will give it to you if you allow so yeah uh, you're saying resonates with everything that are the foundations here so i i hate having doors closed and i want to open every door possible now i'm not saying that i won't try to kick the door and it won't always open but <laughs> at the same time uh i i do like the idea of if i can't open the door then why don't i try the window I, that's something i've mm -hmm. i think it's because i grew up in a family of immigrants and so my family had a very small network and and they were always kind of like reaching out to the family as the circle of people that and i didn't like that because it's like there's a whole world out here of people and your network mm -hmm. is your net worth. And also just, just being open-minded with people and, and vulnerability ties into that too, because I've always been like this. I, I've always, I've often overshared or been over emotional or over open with people that maybe didn't deserve it. But one of the things I discovered is that the more open you are, the more people are more likely to be open. And that is a, something that is a little bit of a superpower that I've developed over the last 20 years. I'd say that I, I have a knack for, um, naturally leaning towards that openness and, and that vulnerability, which can come at a detriment uh, to me at times if the person doesn't really um, have the same sensibilities. But at the same time, if someone is willing to open themselves as well, it becomes this beautiful, like sort of shared moment. So vulnerability, yeah, vulnerability, uh -huh. determination, and, um, and a willingness to be open are the three things that have really- Those are powerful, powerful ingredients. Excellent. Yeah. Oh, um, you might have shared this when you were talking about the 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 drive down and and things starting to hit. But what was your big break if you think of things like that? Like what what where where did things where did things shift? I think that's kind of an idea of a big break. Like whatever you're doing, and then something shifted. Yeah, I would say with voiceover, I'm still. Um, I feel that I'm um on that forward hill I, I would say that you would know this as well as i do that you know voiceover that it doesn't really ever feel like there is a big break there's like that one really mm -hmm. great opportunity and then you know mm -hmm. it, you kind of just keep going and you just that's how you cobble together a life um but I, I certainly feel in voiceover i'm i'm starting to feel some sort of momentum it's nothing crazy but i'm starting to feel like maybe the universe is listening to me and 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 is mm -hmm you know, like kind of like, you know, I've started coaching more, I've started working more, starting to just kind of stay open. Um, and then, and then as far as uh, YouTube, the, the big break was really, uh, wasn't the first video. It wasn't the second video. It wasn't the third video. It wasn't the fourth video. It was like the 10th or so where all of a sudden I said, Oh my, Oh my goodness, I have a channel. And, um, I think it was really when I hit the, at that time it was, it was 1000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. And uh, I hit that fairly quickly. 
um, which is still a shock to me to this day. Um, and then I've just, I just doubled down, like I said. So that was really the big break was when I crossed and I was starting to make an income off of YouTube mm -hmm. and that's been able to sustain me essentially full time, really. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a combination of voiceover and, and the, and the channel that, that yeah. stemmed out of, that stemmed out of your love of video games in the realm, the realm of video games and voiceover and yeah. music. Yeah. So it's, it's all, it's, you're making a full-time living doing what you love. Yeah. And that's the thing is that if I, if I didn't have the studio set up, if I didn't have the mic, if I didn't have the the know-it-all of doing the TikTok videos that I had done for like a year. Mm -hmm. If I didn't know all of that, it was like a perfect storm of a, of a combination of things that basically the Venn diagram of my life, of mm -hmm. all my lived in experiences and all the experiences yet to be found in the middle of that was, uh, was this YouTube channel. And, um, mm -hmm. had I not been a voice actor, I wouldn't have had the equipment just sitting there in my day-to-day -day life. Um, and so it was just this perfect combination of things. So right now I would say, yeah, it's, it's mostly, I would say, honestly, it's 90% YouTube, 10% voiceover. My, my, my real goal in life is to have it be 70% YouTube channel and 40% voiceover where there's a larger, larger increase of auditions. So I'm auditioning every day while also doing the YouTube stuff every day. So that's my, that's my real dream, you know? Yeah. 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 It's so interesting. Um, um oh something just came in my head and it just went out <laughs> wasn't that interesting but <laughs> um uh making a movie. anyway um <laughs> moving on um yeah uh what are you proudest of in your voice over career uh definitely the opportunity in genshin um I think that there's more to go with Genshin still. I'm hoping for that playable character and I'm trying to position myself in a way for that. But I, I was really proud that it was, it was a, it was an accident that I ended up playing this conductor uh, musician uh, and it was just divine providence, I guess um, to play that character. It was very special. So for me, that was a big one. And then there's this other unannounced game that is, is, is out in Southeast Asia, but I can't announce it yet. Cause yeah. that's how the We're rules not in are. but yeah. that's like that's like a, a legacy character that i'm very very excited about and and mm -hmm. i'm over the moon that i was picked and from demo no less and all that other stuff so i was yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um i know what the other thing that i was going to say was um everything you're talking about with everything coming together in the venn diagram at the dojo we're we're all about aligning people with the power and possibility of your voice and mm -hmm. i love how you everything you're doing comes from the power and possibility of your voice and what the what is possible comes from all all over all over the place um and then it's really really exciting um it's really really exciting i know we met a few years ago um it seemed like there was um you were building your confidence mm -hmm. in yourself and in the art form of voiceover and so it's really cool to hear that there's this there's this place where you are you are confident and you are book you are booking and it's not because you aren't confident because you're booking you're booking because you're confident yeah. like like those like it's interesting to see those things come together uh, it, it, you know it's a funny thing because uh, the youtube channel is the one place in my life where i am truly the most confident like i i will always enjoy and engage with uh, like a person i, I made a, a post yesterday that was basically like classical video game music deserves to be in symphony halls etc 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 it's as good as classical music whatever and someone commented like i think video game music is fine where it is we don't need everything to be special and i replied you know, I'm sorry, you're you're wrong in this particular case. With, with all due respect, just because of this, this, and this reason, I do feel like I feel like the confidence I have in my YouTube channel has enabled me to um, go into coaching and go into work with voiceover with a little bit more of like, okay, you know, voiceover and having done a few gigs, I'm like everything that auditions are really challenging and auditions are really hard. But like ultimately actually booking the job and getting into the booth, most of the time your 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 bare your bare minimum is actually it's actually good enough. And like, you don't need to over, over, and you know this, you, you don't need to overexert or over worry. Um, if only we could stop doing that in auditions, which would be fantastic, but it's really a, 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 a funny thing. But, um, but yeah, so thank you. Yeah. I, I feel very, because I'm so confident in the YouTube channel that has helped me be more confident when I get into the booth and, and explore mm -hmm. the, 
characters and, and commercials and stuff. Yeah, it, it may not be easy, but it doesn't have to be hard. Is something we say more or less. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if it what if it were easy? That's cool. Yeah. Um, let's see. What's your biggest fear or challenge in your voiceover career? I'm just not doing enough. I, I wish that I wish that I'm still waiting on this LA agent to happen to apparate. And, uh, you know, I've, I've tried a certain amount and, you know, I, my biggest fear is that I won't be able to do the things that I want to do, which is mostly to be in, in interactive media and, and, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I don't necessarily need to be, I don't know that voiceover will ever be full time for me at this point of where, where I am in my life. Um, and I don't want it to be necessarily because I love what I do with my YouTube channel, with Twitch and with all this sort of stuff. But um, I, I do fear uh, that I, I will not be able to meet my own expectations for where I would like to be in my voiceover career because I love voiceover. Yeah. Well, and I think I think that I think that it's um, an interesting sign of how the business works now that you do have to find the things that that work and then you kind of have to diversify right because even if you even if you are the top video game person the way that that structure is paid just the sessions are not necessarily a living no. obviously then the you know doing what you're doing becoming an influencer going to cons and things like that when you have the, those are ways that video game character you know video game um characters can become your living right but i don't think you can do just video games no you can't there's an inherent you know i, I see this a lot with folks that are mostly in anime is that there is a, a real like scarcity mindset which i personally um having had experienced it in my opera career for 10 years i uh mm -hmm. and i had an advantage because i was a tenor and a rarer voice type so i mean i i, I got jobs on the couch you know it wasn't hard mm -hmm. for me to book work um but I, I can't fathom going back to a world where like I'm hoping and praying for that $120 an hour gig that's only four sessions and then you're like, okay, cool, I have a paycheck. But like I, I just can't imagine going back to that. I can't imagine going back to a world where I'm direct marketing every day and sending out 80 to 100 emails that will largely be annoyed with the idea and hope that in two years someone's going to turn. Now it has happened and I'm thankful for all the work I had done two years ago, but, but, mm -hmm. um, but I think it would be foolish to say that like that is a uh a venture that will net it, it, those seeds may never sprout or whatever the phrase is you know and, and so I'm, I'm grateful that i have this little corner but yeah i can't imagine going back to a scarcity mindset yeah. no, well it's, it's, it's interesting to hear it's interesting to hear you talk about how diligent you are about about your, your youtube and what you do every day and it's it's not it doesn't sound like work when you're doing it and and the direct marketing sounded like it was a little more arduous a little for you right yeah. For you, it was not the it was not the click. You did it, but it was like, Ugh. and then you found the thing that is the click, Just and now like you're like, boom, yeah. boom, boom, boom. That yeah. I I don't mind doing this every day. So I think that's that's an interesting. That's one of the reasons that we like you know we like to have these these uh, this time with people because everybody's got their own way of doing like finding finding their path and finding their way and how do you how do you think about becoming your own content creator youtube or whatever yeah yeah how, how do you think outside the box about how a voiceover career happens and i think that's more and more what is required um you know someone who's who's, who's done an old school way um <laughs> you know i'm i'm doing it every day too to to like what else what else how how else yeah. can i be thinking about this yeah, yeah. Um, are you an introvert or an extrovert? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with being an introvert, know. but uh, <laughs> but I'm most certainly an extrovert. Though I do have a cap at some point. <laughs> I think I think the beautiful thing about that question is is that I think I think the place of success comes from where we can on, yeah. honor honor which whichever is our predilection, and then and then we have to, we are required to expand so if you're introverted then you have to figure out how to be able to reach out and not have that be to your detriment and if you're like woohoo the people you have to be able to sit quietly in your in your little little cubby hole oh and i'm perpetually online yeah no it's not always good to be <laughs> readily available you know it's, it's it has its own challenges too yeah for sure 
Yeah. Well, it sounds it sounds like you've you've got this a part of your life already, and you're 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 shifting locations. But if you could do voiceover from anywhere, where would it be? Um, anywhere where there's a beautiful booth. <laughs> I can't I can't wait for the day. It really doesn't matter. I can't wait for the day that I get my own like proper booth. I step into that thing. And, you know, um, my fiance has an amazing phrase that I sometimes have abused, but it's a short term, short term loss, long term gain. And uh, I really believe in that mantra. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, but you can't do it for everything like uh, like, you know, I don't know. You can't do it for like uh, I don't know clothes. <laughs> you can't do it for clothes, but actually you probably could. <laughs> but like, you know, <laughs> but I really um I can't wait when we move. Uh, definitely one of my big plans is to finally get like a proper like booth. And and I, I mean, it would be ideal if I could have more auditions for that booth. But at the same time, there's nothing quite like feeling like you're playing the part and dressing for the part and walking into that space. So anywhere there's a gorgeous booth, whatever kind of brand it is, I don't even care. But just like a booth that is mine that I step into. And that's my space. I, I, I love, you know, one zone. It doesn't matter where it is. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. What would you say your voiceover motto is? Keep going. <laughs> good. <laughs> good. Break down, break down doors, you know, find a window. Keep going. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. Yeah. And um, knowing what you know now, what would you say to yourself at the beginning of your career? Just train for another year. Train, mm-hmm. train for a year and a half. Like there's no rush. I really rushed because I was really nervous to, because I had just transitioned away from opera. And so I was losing that identity and I very quickly wanted to hop onto another one. Um, mm-hmm. It's not to say my demo was bad. It's not to say that demo didn't get me work. It's not to say that I wasn't able to, but I, I was, I came back from France. It was my final gig. I literally started direct marketing the next day. In oh, DC. wow. Okay. I lived in DC yeah. at the time and I was in France. I had made my demo with next level demos. You know them. They're great. Mm-hmm. Um, they were great. Uh, Brady directed me super well. Um, and then I literally, I went to France, came back from France 28 days later, uh, the next day I picked up the phone and was calling people in DC asking if they had a voiceover oh. roster. I wish I had, I wish I had waited to a make the demo. I wish I had waited to B start marketing. I wish that I had, I had just trained. I wish that I had just trained more and I wish I had spent more money up front. That sounds weird to say. Cause we know we always say like, don't do that. But, uh, I wish that I had really, really invested yeah. three, four, five K coaching. Yeah. That's, that's, that's powerful. That's, I mean, that's exactly what the, what the dojo is about. We always talk about doing your, any, any, anyone who has talent or he has a little bit of something is going to be able to go to a good demo producer and get a pretty okay demo. Cause that's what de- good demo producers do. The game is, can you deliver? Can you right. de- deliver? And so, so, uh, you, so then your, then your demo might be a NICU for a little bit, right? Like it, it might need re- just a little require, might not be as strong as you want it to be. So that that's powerful. And then that it does take about a year. It does take about a year to have that gestation period to birth it and then to, mm-hmm. to have it get out in the world. So that's, that's that's interesting and powerful to hear. And then also coming from your background in opera, right? Because that is such a, such a something that you don't just jump into. It really no. <laughs> it really is um, developing and and starting here and then and then and then both with your skills and your talent and then just the appreciation of what happens to the voice physically Mm -hmm. over the course of a lifetime and and a career so i mean i would say only now for almost four years in would i say that i really feel but i also just coached with richard horvitz and -hmm. that was really eye-opening for me from from the perspective of somebody who you know had a lot of the identity of idea beaten out of him with opera it was i was paid to think i was paid to sing not think and so as an actor we, you know part of our job is to think and develop characterization and read off of spec or whatever and so working with richard i've been able to sorely chip to, sort of chip away like what is my what is my actual want like what what do i want as, as this mm-hmm. who am i what, what and um and also too so so i'm i'm much more confident now uh, than I was four years ago, but also because I, I thankfully I have had some experience where people have, you know, I, I, for instance, I, I sent over, um, I talked to somebody at a conference last week and, and, uh, 
they were like, I was like, do you want to hear, hear my demos? Or she's like, no, you, you have an agent. That's, that's good enough. And I was like, huh, okay, maybe I am, maybe I am good enough, you know, mm -hmm. but and getting used to that and being like, okay, well I can deliver, you know, it's a very, it's an odd, it's, it's an odd career. <laughs> I love it. I love it very much, but it is like, whoa, okay. Am I good enough? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I should be. I think I am. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, Anthony. Well, I'm so glad that I'm so glad that that uh, you've been able to be here and uh, answer these questions for us, and that you'll be joining us for Ask the Sensei. And Ask the Sensei is all you know, all sorts of different perspectives, and I think you bring a really unique perspective to um, to how you have built your career. That I'm excited to have people people explore and open open their minds to. Like, hey, and I think it comes back to what's in your heart. What do you love? And then how do you how do you do how do you do the work and how do you keep it connected to your heart? Yeah. And in theory, <laughs> in theory, that's that's how it works. So it's it's great to to um to get to hear and uh have you share how it's worked for you. So inspiring others yeah. to do. No, I'm very privileged. Thank you for asking me to be a part of it. I feel very I feel very blessed. So I appreciate that. Well we'll see we'll see you on Ask the Sensei. <laughs> yes, you will. <laughs> All right. Oh, and oh, oh, how do how do people go to Marco Meatball? Like, how do they keep in? How do they keep in yeah. contact? Mm, YouTube.com slash Marco Meatball is the is the way to come find me there. I'm very active on uh, X Twitter, uh, Marco D Meatball. And uh, <laughs> that's pretty much the two ways. I mean, there's there's I'm, I'm perpetually online. So you just look oh, up perfect. my name and I'll be there. Marco Meatball. And, and and you know how like podcasts have things at the Greek theater now. Like what what's your dream for Marco Meatball? Like something at the Met or something like what what's like a, a a video game thing at the Met or what what's your vision for Marco Meatball? The sky's the limit. Um, I don't plan on leaving anytime soon. So if in twenty years we can get video game music alongside classical pieces at the new york phil or something crazy like that and i go and am the mc i would just be just absolutely beside myself so you know that's, god god willing and uh, that's that's the goal though that's the goal that's fantastic yay well you make stuff happen you're you're a good that's manifester right. so that's right we'll see you there it's already done <laughs> <laughs> yay well thanks marco we'll, we'll talk to you in a little bit on us sounds good sounds good thanks Steve.